Cura, this program is brought to you by Wellington Access Radio. Wellington Access Radio, make your voice heard. Back to the Black House, and you're here today with uh, Onkyo, our social media specialist, and also I've got a special guest in the in the house today. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh yes, thank you. Um, I'm Wolisu Chikavanga. That's my full name. Um, yeah, I live in Wellington, mm. uh, just uh, up the road near the zoo. Yeah. So basically, that's near the city centre. Uh, there's a specific reason why I chose that place. Anyway. Why is that? Uh, well, everything sort of happens in the city centre, so you know, you gotta be close to where everything is going on. Yeah. But yeah, I'm from Zimbabwe. Yeah, I came to New Zealand in 2017. Oh, you? you yeah. I didn't realise you came in 2017 because I've known you for a couple of years now, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and um, what's what I what I why I wanted you to come in today because you are you're a bit of a entrepreneur, I would say. <laughs> yep. Um, well, I, I believe I'll, I'll be an entrepreneur soon, but that's the dream. I'm working on it. I'm yeah. Basically, taking the steps towards that. That's, yeah. That's right. So, okay. Now I've got Onisu in here today because um, I've since I've met you, I've always thought you're very, very like visioned about what you need to do you like set a goal and you got go to it and then you set another goal and go to it and then I heard you were starting up a business and I was like okay wow you've done so much in the short time that you've been here tell us about CNC yeah so CNC is a transport company in general I would say however we sort of started um to plan some few years ago, say two years ago, towards, you know, starting, setting up a business. But eventually we ended up deciding on the transport business. So it's, it was more like uh, you have to listen to your environment and your society and, you know, get to understand things they have, things they don't have, and things they wish they have, or things that are not done in a more flexible way that they would like. Mm. So we we actually understood that, um, you know, moving is one of the things that's very popular in New Zealand. Mm. Yeah. So people move houses most often due to the housing crisis and all this stuff. And students moving flats, being in a student town. Yeah. So we say, okay, well, it looks like it's a very expensive, you know, um, sort of thing to do. If you mm. want to move, you have to get have some money, spend more money mm-hmm. towards getting people to come and do all the work for you, pick up, drive and drop off. Mm. So we, th- we thought uh, we can make it flexible. What we do is uh, we do pretty much after hours because me and Munya, who is my business partner, we've got full-time jobs. Yeah. So because of that, it's a bit tricky, but we say we'll make it work. Yeah. So work after work, pretty much. 5.30 up to 8 p.m. Saturdays, it's all day. Sundays, yeah, we can be flexible and help those who I need. Instead of them waiting for Monday, mm. for all these companies to open. And So do you find that um, because you are so flexible and because, you know, you've, you've picked up this need in the community that um, a lot of the bigger companies may not be flexible enough to attend to, are you finding you're getting a lot of work um, through 
you know, like through these these networks like social media and things like that, probably non-traditional, or people uh, like directly contacting you and, you know, is your name getting out there? Yes, uh, our name is actually going big. We, we actually limited, uh, you know, the capacity we can provide to people is mm-hmm. not enough. However, um, it's 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 a it's a game. So, you know, you have to start somewhere. You know, training and all this. Not and there's a time when you actually play the game when you are big. Yeah. Um, so we started with social media um, because you know we need to find a pool, of, you know, audience or people somewhere. Yeah. Facebook was one of the um, social media platforms we started with, also website. However, basically, I think Facebook is the one that got us a lot of jobs and also send uh, our name out there more. Mm -hmm. And yeah, word of mouth, like people just randomly calling us. Um, Yeah, we receive a lot of Word of mouth in New Zealand is a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like it's 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 always been kind of like that. Like there is the social media, but and um, I suppose that's a modern word of mouth now. But um, word of mouth in general is like really useful. And um, so, how you find? Are you busy most weekends? Like, do you get really um, busy, or because I, I mean, you can tell me that you're not, but I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I already know how hard you guys are working behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. yeah, we're very busy. Um, mm. In fact, uh, we sometimes get requests to move people, uh, you know, out of Wellington, like three, four hours away. Right. But with the capacity and time we have at the moment, we say now we we can't offer that service. So basically, weekends mostly Saturday. Yeah, we do like moves or four or five moves. We started with smaller ones, just picking up uh, single items or just maybe a few, you know items mm. um maybe three four for example beds and couches yeah but now we, we are sort of getting actually house moving where we move like one two bedroom houses mm-hmm. and a, a bit of three bedrooms if they are pretty much moving to a to a house that's closer to where they they live yeah yeah currently live okay um you don't just do that. You also you also work at the hospital too, don't you? Yeah. How's yeah. that? How how do you find going from being on your feet all day in the hospital to actually moving people? Like, how are you managing the physical the physical demands? Uh, I hope I'm managing it. <laughs> well, it, it's very hard. It's it's tricky, and you strain yourself sometimes. Mm. But I think it's a matter of planning your stuff and make sure you give time for each and everything so you don't rush yourself and also limit yourself to what you can do, yeah. not do too much and end up you know, doing too much over time and probably not even doing all the work that you plan to do. So, yeah, um, sometimes I start early and yeah. wake up early. That's one thing I've learned mm. from people, from the experience seeing other people hearing other people saying if you start your day early uh, you do more than what uh, you know the average um, people around the yeah. world do because yeah. you've added extra time and mm. you got more time to prepare yourself for the day yeah yeah and you're getting in enough of that home you know self-care as well to just manage because it's like I've, I was often thinking about you guys on the weekend when you're, you know, like you've done a work week and then on the weekend you're now doing all this physical stuff, like how, how do you practice some, what do you do for, for relaxing? I mean, besides the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, I, I, I listen to music, so mm. um, I, I think that's my, my entertainment pretty much. I listen to Afro beats to be mm. specific, but obviously... You know, any music that's sort of uh, more uh, more towards kind of entertainment. And I mean, by entertainment, I mean, you know, people do shows around the world. Mm. Um, you know, these musicians, they get around. And, you know, also in the 
um, pubs as well, mm. you know, yeah, or restaurants. They play that kind of music that makes you feel more like you know, you you some way off work, so yeah, yeah, you relax much better. Yeah, yeah, like R and B, hip hop music, yeah, reggae a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I I also wanted to ask you about um, how you how did the idea come up initially. I mean, you I, you told us how you were spot. You know, you were looking for somewhere, some market that yeah. you could actually take advantage of. Where did the idea come up to actually get into business as well as you know your employment and your parents as well, um, and your dad? So you know, yeah. Where did where did the idea? Did you do? Um, entrepreneurship back in because you're from Zimbabwe but yeah. you also <laughs> lived in South Africa for a while didn't you yeah, six years yeah. yeah so like um did you do any entrepreneurship back in Zimbabwe and South Africa um partly I would say yes uh, but I think there's sort of the your like inborn zeal to 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 engage in certain things where you want to be useful to your society. Mm. So I, I believe that um, you can only at least be part of uh, the society if you are helpful, and uh, that's when you can, I would say, the intelligence of the society. Intelligence can be sort of probably um, defined in many different ways, you know. Mm. But I believe that people who are more productive and capable, they're intelligent. So if I want to be part of those people in the society, mm. I have to provide something that will help the people. So I'm making myself useful. The ideas I bring or whatever I, I, I sort of experience and see, I need to take advantage of anything I can. But mm. at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm helping the society. So, yeah, I used to, my, my mom was a gardener. And my dad was a farmer and a teacher, so we used to right. do a lot, lots of work. What did your dad teach? Um, primary school, but he was very good in English. Okay, uh, yep. yeah, yeah. It's his second language, though. But yeah, our first language is Shona, but well, he's fluent because he speaks that. Yeah, as his mother tongue. But yeah, I think because the world relies more on communication. If you can't communicate, there's nothing much you can engage with other. Mm you know, places and other people from other countries or other continents. So my dad was passionate with teaching English so that, you know, people around him or in, in our society will be able to engage with pretty much, you know, most of the people around the world. Mm. So, yeah, I learned a lot from him. He's sort of my role model. Um, we used to sell stuff from the garden around, just oh. around the... Yeah. Like garden market sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so fruits mostly and vegetable. Mm -hmm. So my mom used to grow that. So we pick, pick, uh, take it around and, yeah, sell to people door to door. Okay. And also we deliver to some shops and, yeah. So that's how I gained that kind of, you know, uh, entrepreneur kind of mindset and experience. And how old were you when this was all happening? Were you, were you quite young when you when you were doing that with your dad, or was this as a teenager? Or? Uh, pretty much teenager. Teenager. Yeah. See, that's what like I think that's what we need in New Zealand is like young uh, people, students at high school level actually learning how to do business. Yeah. I think COVID's really changed the way the the world operates, and um, I've also noticed online that uh, just today, actually, that the Education Department of New Zealand is funding a um, business uh, business course, all for free, if you're a resident mm. or a citizen of the country, you get it completely free. And I think it's 36 weeks. Um, it's it's on the, it's, they've got notices on it for the events page, and I've put it up in a few pages to have a look at. But I think, like, I think you're right, like, in New Zealand, I noticed that if your parents were business people, then it's more likely that the children will actually learn business through their parents. Otherwise, it's an expense. 
and learning at a young age is quite amazing. Like, I think that if I'd known about tax and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, did, did your dad, like, I don't know what the tax system's like in Zimbabwe, but did you have to learn all of that with your dad as well? Yeah, unfortunately, no. So that's one mm. thing I wanted to point out, but mm. you, you sort of, uh, uh, you know, on, in play with, what 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 what's very important in mm. the society as well as in business so you sort of actually going through the right channel um so i didn't learn anything about tax i didn't even know anything yeah like tax exists right and how does it work so yeah we used to just sell stuff and yeah you yeah, grow the stuff and then, and then you go and sell the stuff yeah, and, yeah you get the right. money and then no one taught us about how to handle the money, you know, financial education where you you learn um, how to handle money in a business mm-hmm. and also how to understand what makes a business grow in a certain environment considering the taxes, for example, there's different types of taxes and you got to know, okay, I am required, to, as a business, I'm required to uh, collect GST for the government for the mm. services we provide. Yeah, that GST, eh? Yeah. Every two months, is it? Uh, you can set up um, your time where you, you'd like to do the claiming. So by, by claiming, it's pretty much like you're either paying the GST that you collected to the government or you sort of uh, work it out in a way that probably you, spe- you spend more money on growing your business and you paid more GST. Mm. So the GST you collected is less than what you spend. Yeah. And because this is, you're, yeah, like you're still to... a small company, businesses yeah. are encouraged that, okay, if they're still small, they're not making much, they're struggling. Let's say whatever GST they collect um, against what they spent on their development. Yeah. We'll see if they spend more. If they spend more, then they'll get that back. Right. It's pretty much a service that's going to serve the community. So they want it to grow. So they don't want to keep taking money from small companies. Right. And as you grow, you understand you end up paying income tax as a company. Mm. So you need to plan ahead and understand, okay, from at this stage, how do I operate? At that stage, how am I going to operate? Which is... Yeah, it takes time. You need to read. and. <laughs> okay, well, I want you to hold that thought for now. What we're going to do is we're going to go to a track. We're going to come back and talk about, like, the challenges a little bit um, after this song. So first up, I've got Tiana Michelle, and she's a Zimbabwe. We're going to stay in Zimbabwe for a little bit, and she's a Zimbabwe based in Auckland, and this is her track, I Love You. Oh, sorry, it's called I Miss You. the cr- 
Christmas parties that we had I remember feeding chickens just with you and dad And in the morning of the holidays I remember how we milked the cows together in the morning I remember loving you And I remember all the pain you felt Cause you, you felt you had a duty to protect me You were everything to me, just as I was to you With nothing much to give, you gave it all to me how you felt when you said to me I want you to prosper and find yourself I want you to find your true happiness I remember how you took me everywhere you went You tried your very best to make sure I'm safe Every morning you would make me porridge to my favorite And now I'm making for my babies like you did Oh dear grandmother, I love you, I miss you If heaven had cell phones, you bet I'd be calling And you're back on the Black House, hey. I want to be talking to uh, Inesu again. We're just going to go back to what we were chatting about before. So, okay, you've, you've come to New Zealand. You've come to a brand new country. Um, you've only been here since 2017. You've started up a business as well as holding a job, as well as being a family man. What have been the challenges? What have you found that's been the hardest to actually uh, do this? Um, and yes. thinking about you did it right before COVID, of all things. Well, we actually started our business um, after COVID. Was actually. it after COVID? Okay. Yeah, COVID started in March 2019, was it? Right, yeah, uh, 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2020, yeah. 2020, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we started in June. Okay. Uh, Were we still in lockdown or no? We were. We were just got out of lockdown. Just yeah. got out of lockdown. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you were thinking about it before that, right? Oh yeah, we had everything planned. All the sort of you know, um, the things we need were already discussed. We've done all the discussions mm. with Munyaradi, my uh, uh, partner in crime. Yeah, my my, <laughs> my, my, my workmate. I would say yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 business partner. Mm-hmm. So. Even when we're just socializing around, somehow our, our conversation will end up uh, within the business sort of, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was Bi- birthed, it was birthed over a bottle of beer. Yeah. So it's okay. pretty much like, yeah, yeah, you can have a few beers, but then, yeah, you got to talk about business. Let's already. get serious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't just enjoy and socialize and not mm. even plan for the future. There's quite a lot of challenges. Um the main challenge is actually fear to start something. Right. Because whenever you want to start something that need to make sense, you need to commit to it. So the commitment is, is a big challenge as well. Yeah. But you will uh, experience that after you start. So everyone is afraid to start a business. Mm-hmm. But everyone wants to have a business, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Everyone yeah. wants a million dollar or billion dollar business. Right. If you can just have it, <laughs> it's easy. But there's quite lots of challenges. So fear, uh, yeah, the commitment, the time. And when I say fear, it's not just being afraid of starting. It's being afraid of, you know, putting things together mm. and uh, the challenges that you are going to experience once you start. So you overcome the fear. But mm. after that... There's lots of things that comes up. For example, you make mistakes. Mm. You know, if you're not serious, you keep making the same mistakes. So mm. you need to challenge yourself and say, okay, I've experienced this. I don't want to make this kind of mistake. And you learn from it. You grow from that. Mm. Yeah, uh, the other challenge is time. Yeah, you know, finding time to do everything. But that that's not an excuse because... Even people who are successful, whatever they've done, they all have 24 hours in a day. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> and we're able to do this. You can't excuse yourself from, mm. you know. So there's a certain level of physical fitness required for what you do. So, like, um, 
Would was would that have been a fear that maybe physically couldn't be capable or you might physically become overwhelmed by the work? What what were what were the fears that you had? I think the fact that, you know, for example, you want to start a transport company, mm. you don't even know where to start. Right. So you're afraid now that okay, if I buy a truck, what am I gonna do with the truck? Mm. So you think, okay, there's these people who have trucks who've got names and they're already doing this and how am I going to get clients? Right, yeah. So you're just afraid of the logistics that you need to go through to be able to establish yourself. Mm. And the time you need to spend planning and because if we have a website, yeah, but yeah, um, we don't work every day. Probably someone would think it's not necessary to have a website when you just do this as a part-time job, which is probably only Facebook, but you have to understand that sometimes people need easier things. For example, when you do house moving, you need to know how much property they have. And the easiest way is to get them to fill a court. And the court has to be very clear. All they need to do is put numbers and sizes. Right, yeah. You already designed a template mm. with pretty much everything that people have yeah. in homes. And what they just do, it doesn't take more than five minutes or ten minutes fill the court. And they find that on your website? Yeah. Okay. So that's basically the challenges that I would say. But however, there's lots more challenges. Like, you know, um, you can't start by charging too much. Mm. You need to sort of promote your business. So that way with the expensive involved, it, it need a, you need a balance. Mm. And the other sort of challenges you have is, you know, being able to become better and better. Right. Yeah. And working with someone, you know, you need to understand that we, we have to respect each other, but we need to correct each other at the same time. Yeah. So you need someone flexible. So mm. that's another challenge that you face before you start a business, finding the right person to work with. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, like you got you and Munya gel quite well. Yeah, I've noticed like you're quite good friends, and um, you do a lot of things. You do a lot of things together. You've done other stuff with him with gut like gardening and yeah. and um, have you ever helped him paint? What is that? Have you ever helped him paint? Uh, well, yes. We so if I have nothing to do, I can just go and help him. Yeah, pretty much. I'll be. Uh, yeah. Uh, the guy who will be running around picking stuff and yeah. giving him stuff when he's probably on the roof or things like that. So yeah. helping hand, but he helps me as well. So, so finding finding that that right person to do that sort of thing with, I think that's that's really important in any kind of teamwork that you actually um, can get along, right? Yeah, yeah, basically don't think of your personal benefit from whatever mm. you do. Mm. Value... The fact that, you know, you're doing this to someone, it's going to benefit them. Mm. Um, but at the same time, or I would say, however, at the same time, um, you're helping yourself because the more you help someone who you work with in some other areas, you're sort of creating a bond and you're showing that they, they are valuable to you. And if they're in trouble, you're there for them. Or yeah. if they need a hand, you're always there. And yeah. that, that makes your relationship a bit more strong and, you know, more like friendly kind of, yeah. Mm. yeah. And it's so important this day and age because so many people are like just in, in it for themselves. They're not, they don't think like that in business. Uh, a lot of people fail to start actually because the first thing, that comes to their mindset before they start a business is um, this person is going to benefit from this business. Who is going to handle that and that, right? Mm. Before they engage into it. So basically you need to just engage into some some conversation with people around you, people yeah. you think can partner with. And you understand who you can work with and how you can get that along. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about it, but we're going to go to another song. Um, next up, I've got a young lady called Cash. She's a 26-year-old. We're still in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwean artist and producer and engineer residing in Wellington that is making music to inspire and empower people 
You can follow her on Instagram at Cass Kanda, and this is her 2017 track, Silhouettes. <laughs> with Silhouette. Um, I'm going to go to another track right now. We're going to stay with some music for a little bit. i got Louisa Beats um, and he's an independent artist originally from South Sudan raised in Kenya and then trans located himself to New Zealand. Louisa is 100% do-it-yourself creator who produces all of his music, shoots his videos, mixes and masters all his songs and releases via the cell phone Sud underscore Waves Inc. imprint. Hey, this is uh, Louisa Beats. And take it off. Can I take you home? Yeah, your body, would you get that wrong? I like the way you shake it on. Now, baby, gonna take it off. Yeah, I make a say. Baby, gonna run away. Take it off, take it off, break it down. 
down. You got a body, I forgot this, I'ma lay it down. You all started from the bottom, I'ma make it out. Baby, break it down. Your booty take a cell. Shake it now. Make it clap. Baby, bag it up. Put it on my lap. You know you love a thug when I hit it from the back. Kill it, kill it. Yeah, get a tag. Ain't no in and out. Get a sleep in it. I go deep in it. Make it moan, scream with it. Ooh. Body like whoa, bring it back to the team with it. Roll like the weed with it. Rock on the lean with it. Say my name while I'm beating it. I got fire on my spirit, I be bleeding it. On my king shit, yes, I be leading it. Hey. Can I take you home? Yeah, your body, would you get that from? I love the way you shake it on. Now, baby, gonna take it off. Girl, I make a say, yeah. Baby, gonna run away. Yeah. I love the way you shake it on. Now, baby, gonna take it off. Gonna take you to the crib Show me what you're walking with Go ahead and scream Girl, you know I got you You don't got to dream Got me drunk and you're laughing I took more than a sip Show me what you're about Show me what them lips Do you are love how you move Get it in the booth You the one, you the truth I'm dirty, I'm good Ain't gonna shit, I got to prove Yeah, you already know how I do Yeah, they don't really know they assume Yeah, so we make move, we resume Yeah we proceed, get the G's Looking fine in them jeans Got the busting at the scene Take it to a stream Make it rain, see the stream Make it flow, feel the breeze Can I take you home? Yeah, your body, would you get that from? I love the way you shake it on Now baby, gonna take it off Girl, I make a say Baby, gonna run away I love the way you shake it on Now baby, gonna take it off Go ahead, take it off for a player. Beg it up, don't stop, I'm a slave. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm just saying. Bring the heat up, bake it, yeah. Beg it up, girl, take it, hey. Do your thing, girl, shake it, yeah. We keep it real, they fake it. Let's go, it's on, you get naked, hey. All your senses reawaken. You say it's mine, yeah, it's mine for the taking. They think they know what I'm about, they're mistaken. I'ma treat you real good. Go on shopping spree if you want it, baby. Take it, put it in the bag, baby. Throw it back. Yeah, yeah. you got what the lag. Yeah, yeah, you got it bad. Can I take you home? Yeah, your body, would you get that from? I love the way you shake it on. Now, baby, gonna take it off. Girl, I make a say, yeah, yeah. baby, gonna run away. I love the way you shake it on. And you're back on the Black House, uh, 106.1 FM. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit with Ernesu because um, there were, we talked about challenges just before those uh, the music break, but I wanted to ask you a little bit more about um, being the added challenge of not just working full-time, having a business, but also having a newborn. Well, he's not, he's not absolutely brand new. I mean, he's a little, he's, he's about a, almost a year or just over a year now. Basically, uh, he was born just a few months after we started. Yeah. Um, so there's quite a lot of challenges with just having a, a baby. Mm. Uh, the first thing, you don't know anything about, you know, taking care of a baby, so... You have to sort of learn and experience how do you handle a baby? How do you, you know, uh, take care of them from the time they wake up, feed, and to the time they have to sleep. And, well, they don't have sleeping time when they actually... <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, like, I remember being, like, I, that was all I could do. I really couldn't do anything else. Yeah. I just wanted to look after the kid. <laughs> yeah. That was enough, you know. But you're doing all of this and being a dad as well. Yeah, so I think I would say you just need to work ahead around it and sort of, you know, give each other time to relax with your your partner or your, your wife, you know, and making them understand the benefits of you not being around sometimes, mm. and at the same time, make sure they're all flexible and, you know, you, you need to do some of the things um, that probably some other people won't do. For mm. example, you need to make sure if you leave 
wake up early and do some other things for example you know making the house clean yeah and you know taking care of the bathroom and of course a little bit of uh, clean um, i mean uh, cooking and cleaning the kitchen you're doing that as well yeah i do that yeah i do that here mm. and there well you know it's not this is millennial dads for you like <laughs> they got they got it they got their heads together you have to, I mean, mm. because at the end of the day, you just pile work on, mm. on one person. Yeah. Yeah, and they can't handle it and everything won't work out. And having a full-time job as well, that, that's one other thing that's very challenging because a lot of people say, oh, I'm tired after work, but it's your mind, actually. Mm. But also, depending on what type of job you do, yeah, mine is pretty much a bit of uh, physical work required uh, but more of kind of uh, using your mind i mm. work as a physiologist a heart physiologist so we, we pretty much more on the you know uh, management diagnosis finding a problem and mm. uh, you know providing a solution you know mm. to manage you know um yeah your work and giving your service to the people yeah. so Basically, you have both that that trains you. Your mind is trained, and physically a little bit, you're also strained. Mm. And ma- most of the time, we're on your feet. You know, you're not just sitting. Exactly. On desk. Yeah, like you'd have to be moving around quite a few different patients, right? Just to adjust those um, things. Like yeah, yeah. The heart. What are the heart monitors? Or yeah, they're pretty much monitors. Um, mm. Although some do provide some kind of therapy to the. Mm. Patients, but it's pretty much working around those, you know, from one place to another throughout the day. That's so. <laughs> like I'm just like astounded with what you're able to do, and I think it's like really insp- inspirational to young people that are thinking about, you know, in this new in this new era where you know, like people are losing their jobs and they might have to think about, well, what can I do as a business? This is really insightful to. Um, just to have a chat with you about what you went through. And, um, yeah, like, is there anything else you want to say about organizing a business all on your own, anything that you can think of that's... Yeah, I would say um, you need to pretty much be focused. You need to focus on the main goal of you starting a business. What do you want to do? Because Mm. as you do start a business you are forced to do some other things that you probably never thought you would do. What do you mean by that? Like, uh, For example, now I do this business, but um, I realize that, you know, uh, if, I'm, if, if, if I can't if get some clients for the moving, for the mm-hmm. transport company, I can't waste time. I need to do something else. Right. So when I get a chance, I do gardening work because it's one thing that most companies cannot offer instantly that service. If you want it offered, you have to wait because they're they busy, they're fully booked. Yeah. But as a sole trader or sort of entrepreneur, you can be flexible and at least do as much as you can quickly mm. and put more extra effort. Sometimes, you know, do, do sometimes do people call you and they want to be moved the same day that they call you? Well, they can actually call you towards the end of the day and they want to be moved on the same day. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. They, and you guys are like, yeah, let's just do it. Uh, you have to just, you know, be quick. Um, call your business partner. Chat with them. Okay, we've got someone who needs to be moved from this place to that place at this time. Mm. Can we do it? Why can't, okay, why can't we do it if we cannot? If we can, okay, fine. Um, yeah. Then, yeah, we get on to it and, yeah, we offer the service. That way you... You more of someone who cares about the people, not just making money because you're sacrificing your time. Yeah. If you we work out till six, but sometimes we actually pick up people around six seven. Wow. And okay. We end up working up to eight nine yeah. p.m. Yeah. Or even later. I think you've worked yeah. later than that, haven't you? Yeah, we have. We have pretty much up to probably nine, and then you have to drive from wherever you dropped them off, and mm. yeah. So. It's a matter of being flexible, <laughs> creating time to yeah. do things for people, make them understand that, you know, you are there for them. They scale you as someone who's there to help. Yeah. Yeah. So 
uh, we we also uh, a bit um, affordable. Mm. We don't charge crazy prices. Yeah. Even in future, we we're planning on getting truck a truck, and basically trucks in. in, in That's going to make it easier to move the bigger places. Yeah. Yeah, but still, we won't be charging too much. Uh, we start to sort of you know um, charge something fair, and obviously we have to not notify them. It's it's pretty much a promotional discounted price until mm. we get our feet on it and we grow. Right. This yeah. is amazing, actually. Um, I'm going to go to another song and basically come back and you can give us all your deets. How's that sound? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. You know, you can laugh in here. So, do you know this guy? I, I <laughs> This guy in the gym, yeah. you know, the, he's tunnel visioned about everything. He was tunnel visioned in the gym, got his six pack in time for the wedding. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> you know, like I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to work them out and I'm not getting anything I'm still got a one pack it did, nothing's happening yeah. this guy gets his six pack yeah. right you know has the suit all ready and has an amazing wedding yeah and um, you know like I know this this guy when he sets his mind to doing something he does it and I think that's also a trait that you yeah. have to have right you've yeah, got to be to determined kind of yeah, yeah to, to achieve to set those goals and achieve them yeah, the only thing that should stop I've just you never from. seen anyone do it like you, though. Like, <laughs> you're a machine. The only thing that should stop you from doing that is you understanding that actually I'm offering a wrong service or I'm in the wrong industry. I don't understand it. Mm. I'm trying, but at the end of the day, you can't, not everything will make you successful. Mm. So you need that flow, but mm. keep trying. As long as someone else can do it mm. and you are pretty much similar to them. Uh, you, you probably don't need too much money to do it. So they, you just need to work around the challenges mm. yeah. rather than trying to do a business. For example, you, you go to a rural area and you want to um, say, I want to provide renewable energy to you, mm. you know, solar panels and all this. They don't afford to buy them. So you can try to do that, but you're just forcing yourself somewhere you can't fit. So yeah. it's, 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 it's a matter of, Doing what you believe will happen uh, and will, will work out from what you can see around, yeah. Yeah, and also I think too when you're when you're um, focusing on providing a service and and expect and, and doing something that makes the people happy, that's a brand, really, isn't it? That's the kind of branding that you're creating. That you're you're actually about giving the customers something that they need. And want, and that's um, that kind of branding is often when you ring some companies, you've got to work around them. Yeah. So I think that's bringing something different. Yeah. So well, it's a brand, and our name um, is basically our second names. Uh, they both start with a C, so we say it's C and C. Oh, I wonder Working where the C together. and C came from. Yeah. So yeah. C and C, Chikavanga and Chikerema. Right. Chikerema and Chikavanga, it's either way. And, yeah, so it's something we're doing together. Yeah. Focus on it. And we need to make sure that it's something that will make people happy. It will grow. Our focus is growth and uh, not just getting money because if you focus on looking for money, you're just going to spend it because mm. when you have it, probably your dream was just to have money. And <laughs> when you have money, you have things you need to spend it on. So, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, that's really cool. I'm gonna come back after this next song. Um and you can give us all these details, yeah? Right. Okay, so we got coming up now, we got Camouflage Rose. He's a Brisbane based and Zimbabwean born again. Um brings in a unique fusion of dancehall, Afro beats and hip hop together in a spacey mix of party anthems and late night grooves, a staple of the Australian music scene. Late nights is a great introduction to the camouflage. Rose vibe. Hey, the body's rocking and I feel alright. Late nights with the golden so we dance all night. Hey, I got the right to set your night on fire. Hell yeah, we order about it till the club runs out. Say God, fuck with my vibe tonight. Say God, fuck with my style tonight. Say God, fuck with my whip tonight. No. And I feel alright. Late night, fit the gun, I'm dead, 
dance all night. Hey, I got the vibe to set your night on fire. Hell yeah, we hold about it till the club runs out. Say God, fuck with my whip tonight. Say God, fuck with my vibe tonight. Say God, fuck with myself tonight. No, 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 no. Oh, hey. Late nights, weekend, we wasted. Back on the Black House. Um, we're just going to do a quick roundup now. Um, I want to give a shout out to Farmer and Dye. He's moved back to Dakar. Um, she used to live in New Zealand. She moved back to Dakar in 2017. She's doing a fundraising for the production of Lab and a training centre to support its vibrant and Dakar's vibrant and underserved independent film scene, bringing film back to Dakar. If you go onto our Facebook page, you'll be able to see the link. Um, it's a fundraiser. There's a little bit more information up there. So, um, yeah, just go. It's a very cool thing to support. And uh, if you support the African Film Festival, um, get in there and support uh, Farmer over in Dakar with this uh, this uh, project that she's involved with. Okay, we're just going to do a quick roundup, and we're going to go to our last song. Give us the deets. Unesu, all about CNC. Where do we find you? Okay, uh, so uh, we can you, you can find us uh, on Facebook at um, CNC Moving Transport and Logistics Limited. We also have um, a website that's www.cncmovingtransport.co.nz. Yeah, and yeah, you can still text us or call us on our numbers. <laughs> My one is uh, 022 392 
And the other one is 027 274 4246. Cool. Yeah. Um, what we'll do is we'll make sure we put a post up for you uh, for CNC. So all you uh, students and people that want a really economical way to move your flats, your houses, your couch, your mum, your dog, whatever you need to move, <laughs> yeah. just get in touch with um, CNC Moving and Logistics. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Right. and um, they'll set you right on the spot, if you like. Call them a 10. After the beers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick House. Yeah, and appreciate. Thank you for having me. No problem. You're most welcome. And shout out to the uh, baby boy, TK. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> TK, you behave yourself. One day I'm going to be your babysitter. All right. Uh, next, our last Good song moments. for the day. Our last song for the day is uh, Dunedin based another Zimbabwean Kiwi artist. I don't know, like we just got we had we had a Zimbabwean Zimbabwean fest today, I think, with the music. It was, yeah, it yeah. Sounds um, like. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really thinking about it. We actually had a lot more, but you know, um, we'll get to that on another day. Um, so Timmy is a Dunedin based Zimbabwean Kiwi artist. He describes himself as one of the Vosch Collective's rappers, singers, seeing an extremely rapid rise to prominence over 2019 and 2020. Timmy has created songs that span an array of, uh, an array of genres. On Heat, Timmy delivers a barrage of bars for you to decipher and its accompanying visual showcase, the camaraderie between his fellow Vosch members. This is Timmy and this is Heat. Shout out for our uh, South Island MCs. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, we make heat like a sauna. For the top like Obama Cut to the chase These bars like a Tana Don't care about your bull Like a farmer Yeah we make heat Like a sauna Coming for the top I'm Obama Cut to the chase These bars like a Tana Don't care about your bull Like a farmer Care about your bull like What if I these people Like I'm Rick See the haters switch Now they try to get my attention Chop with the sauce When I drip Man that's how we live We about to teach A little lesson Living up for energy When people try to wait on me Wait Sipping feet behind the melody, these beats that I be pressuring. A lot of lyrics at the lottery. A lot of these little people try to bother me. I'm pondering. Don't follow the economy. I'm all about my business. Making all my shots so my money tall. I ain't trying to tell you that I got it all. I'm 18, get a minute, you ain't got it all. That program was brought to you by Wellington Access Radio. Get your voice heard. Thanks, New Zealand On Air, for funding accessmedia.nz.